Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Wang? Yeah. Do we submit yeah. the labs that are due for this uh, the, the, this week's lab this week or next week? Uh, this week, uh, we will continue on the, uh, what, what is the lab? The Nine. Yeah. So we'll Do submit we... it, uh, next week. OK. Yeah. So don't forget, today is uh, the due date for travel 20. The practice. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Wang. Yeah. Um, I, I don't mean to, to make a, a big deal out of this, but um, I have been like really struggling uh, in this class. I, mean, I was struggling before the whole online thing. Mm -hmm. um, and now that it's online, I'm really struggling. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but it, would it be okay if maybe we could like slow down the lectures just a little bit? Like, it's getting to the point where I don't even know what questions to ask because I'm so lost. Oh. Uh, okay, yeah, I think um, from today, uh, we will kind of take it easy because today and then next class, uh, we will try to finish chapter 21. And um, so we don't have too much of those uh, calculations. Uh, so for chapter 21, the first few sections just uh, conceptual. Uh, then the last few sections will be the calculations. But those calculations kind of review what we learn in chapter 14. Um, okay. Yeah, so we can, uh, we, we come to this point now, it's kind of, we are going to slow a little bit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this, uh, I think we have uh, today's class and then uh, next class, then next week, Tuesday, we will uh, try to finish chapter 21. Uh, so we'll have plenty of time to finish chapter 21. And then we will have our exam, uh, exam. Uh, I think that's exam three. I write that wrong. Uh, exam yes. Three. Exam three on April twenty third. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then after that, we will have two more classes on chapter thirteen, and then we will have our final on the uh, May seventh. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. Um, yeah, Gerald. I, I just remind everyone you need to do practice. I saw uh, only uh, about uh, only a few students uh, submitted uh, the chapter 20 practice yet. Uh, so if you really get uh, lost, uh, in, like what, you don't know what to do, um, so try to uh, watch the video for the lecture. Uh, also try to start on the practice. Um, so try to uh, force yourself, try to do those uh, practice questions. Uh, yeah, if you really, really stuck, don't have any idea on how to do it, uh, so you can mm -hmm. either yeah, watch the video or just um, uh, set up a Zoom meeting with me. I can go over step by step with you on the practice. Okay, awesome. See you over email then. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. You're welcome. Uh, Dr. Wang, mm -hmm, Donna. for our final exam, is right. it going to be like early in the morning at 7 a.m.? Uh, that's a good question. I think uh, probably uh, we will use the schedule early in the morning. Um, unless everyone uh, okay, uh, don't have any conflict, if you don't have any other test on that day, 
Uh, I think the final is probably kind of busy. Every day you probably have some of those uh, tests. Um, yeah, if you, I, I will try to uh, use the, the schedule time early in the morning, started early in the morning. Uh, so if, uh, what do we say? If, if uh, that's not okay, uh, uh, I, I think that should be okay for everyone. And if you prefer to uh, start in, in a later date, and uh, uh, I, I don't know how to do that. I think uh, is, we have like 130 students and, and uh, we cannot really have a very good uh, uh, census like everyone will agree on a, on a later date. Yeah, so Zora, let's try to stay with uh, the, the schedule uh, in person test and we'll start at uh, uh, 7 or 7 30 something. I don't remember the exact date. So it's not going to be online or is it going to be online? Online, online for sure. Online. I, I think your question is about what time we start. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we will, we will start uh, as a schedule uh, at a earlier time than the class time. So our class time is starting from 9 a.m. Um, so our schedule final will be early than 9 a.m. Uh, so in that way, we will avoid any conflicts or for from uh, to other any other classes, right? Because you don't know we ha we have 130 students. And maybe someone has some of those uh, schedule or something. Um, you know, after our our exam. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have a question. No, Lisa. Um. So about the um lab, the mm -hmm. the la A and I labs. There's no like do section where you can turn it in. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I you mean for the electrical plating lab? Uh. Yeah, eight, nine. Uh, oh, eight, nine. I mean, oh. nine. Sorry, nine. Okay, yeah, yeah, nine, uh, nine and ten. Yeah, don't worry. I, I will check that, uh, make sure I will set up the uh, uh, place so you can submit as what you did before. It's due tomorrow, right? Uh, actually, will be due uh, one week from tomorrow for the electrical plating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this uh, lab will take two weeks. And uh, so uh, uh, last week, then this week we do the lab. So as uh, as usual, we will turn in the lab report one week after we finish the lab. So we supposed okay. to finish. The, yeah, we supposed to finish the lab like tomorrow. So therefore, you can turn in. Uh, so twenty uh, second. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, uh, ask me anytime or email me. Uh, okay, so we will continue on this uh, chapter 21, radio chemistry. Um, so we study, we have a few different uh, uh, mode or way of uh, uh, study those uh, radioactive nuclear particles. Uh, so we can see way of uh, decay or radioactivity. So we learned so far in this class, we are going to study five of them. Uh, so one way we call that alpha. So that uh, is a Greek letter alpha, we call that alpha decay. And then we have that uh, beta. Beta decay, and then we have the gamma. So gamma emission is not really a physical particle, it's a high energy packet. And then we have the so-called positron. Positron emission. Then we have another way uh, that's called the electron capture. So 
So we know like alpha emission is really not a physical particle. So usually this, uh, I mean the gamma, so the gamma not really a physical particle. So usually it's uh, go together with uh, all the other four modes of decay. Uh, so then uh, what are those particles? What is alpha? What is beta? What is positron? What is electron? Where do they come from? Um, so in this uh, section, we are gonna study where they come from, how we produce a beta. Beta is like a high speed electron. We know in the nuclear nucleus or nuclear eye, we don't have electron in the nuclear eye. So then where the electron come from? And uh, where is the, where the electron go if it get captured? Uh, so first we see what, where the beta particle, the electron come from. Uh, so we think about in the nucleus, we have a proton and a neutron. Uh, so uh, when we think about so where is the electron come from, we think about this is our reactant. So we'll take, uh, we'll take one neutron and, or convert one neutron into one proton. So in, the, in that process, we, we produce an electron. Then the produced electron cannot reside in the nuclei to get ejected. So that's where the beta particle comes from. And uh, to learn that is very important because later on we will see the stability of the nuclei. Uh, so the stability of the nuclei, uh, when variable uh, were tell us whether the nucleus or nuclei stable or not, it depends on the ratio between neutron and a proton. Uh, so this is one way to change the ratio of neutron proton by decrease the number of neutron, increase the number of proton. Uh, positron emission, uh, we can think about the positron, uh, so that's, is like the anti-electron uh, has a similar, uh, like the atomic, uh, the, the mass number, but the atomic number opposite. Uh, so that uh, positron come from a proton, uh, so proton or convert a proton into a neutron and then eject uh, a positron. So that's also another way to alternate or to change the number of proton and the number of neutron. Okay, so the, the next one is what will happen to the electron that is captured? Uh, so we're thinking about if you adding electron uh, to the nucleus and uh, that electron will not exist for long, not change into something else or react with something else. So the easier way to think about what were the electron react with, uh, we know electron has negative charge, proton has a positive charge. So naturally uh, the captured electron combine with the proton and uh, convert it, that proton into neutron. And uh, so this is, uh, we think about uh, this uh, uh, three uh, way of uh, those uh, nuclear particles, where they come from. Uh, so the other two, one is alpha particle, the other one is the gamma ray. Alpha particle just, uh, so alpha particle, we know that same for the alpha particle is the helium nucleus, which means atomic number is two, uh, mass number is four. So that you can imagine it has, uh, let's see, I just use circle for proton. So this is a proton and a proton. And then, uh, so then you have a neutron. So let me highlight the neutron and a neutron. So these four particles just, uh, uh, ejected together by some of those larger nuclear eye. Uh, so this is the so-called alpha particle. So, so in this, in this 
mode of decay, uh, we really did not see the conversion between neutron and proton or electron capture. It just happened for some of those larger nuclear eye, uh, they become so large. Uh, so the so-called strong nuclear force, um, not enough for holding all those uh, neutron proton together. So sometimes they just lost a small piece of the uh, helium nucleus, which means uh, two proton, two neutron together get uh, ejected. <laughs> All right, uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Wang. Yeah. So an electron that is, is positive, is that called the positron? Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's, uh, the positron is uh, kind of uh, called the anti-electron. Um, so yeah, they have the same mass, uh, but the charge is opposite has the electron. Uh, so we call that uh, positron. Uh, so you can see the notation for the positron on this slide. Uh, you, still, you can still use uh, E for electron or beta for beta particles, uh, but make sure the charge uh, compare here is plus one and electron here is negative one. Uh, so then this top number here is zero as zero. So zero is the mass number. Mass number not equals mass, so that's mass number. We know mass number equals number of uh, proton plus number of uh, neutron. So obviously in a single electron, we don't have a proton in it, we don't have a neutron in it, so therefore the mass number equals zero. Uh, then we know electron has mass, so the, the mass is about uh, 2,000 uh, 2000 of the mass of a proton or neutron. So even though the mass is much, much smaller than proton or neutron, but electron has a mass, uh, but in terms of mass number, we don't have a mass number for electron. Yeah, so the, so the question is uh, that the positron is, uh, has a positive charge, uh, uh, I think what you said is a positive charge of the electron. Uh, probably okay, the way you said. Um, yeah, because it has some similar property as the electron, uh, but not really a electron. All right, uh, so this table, uh, so summarize those samples. Uh, to know that it is important in this chapter because in this chapter you are going to learn how to write nuclear reaction equations. And when you write nuclear reaction equations, you need that. You need to know how do you write a neutron, how do you write a proton, and how do you write an electron, and alpha particle, beta particle, positron emission. So that the gamma radiation uh, doesn't matter too much. Uh, in our written for the chemical, uh, nuclear chemical reaction equations, but they don't have mass, they don't have atomic numbers. Uh, they just uh, uh, just tell us, uh, you know, we, we, we have some of those uh, nuclear reaction process, it always uh, emitting some of those energy, and those energy, we call them gamma rays. Right, uh, so this question is uh, what product forms when plutonium-238 undergoes alpha emission? To find that, uh, you just kind of uh, write what is the reactant and what is one of those products. Uh, so tell you plutonium-238 and uh, so in, in those type of program, you assume there is only one red tank. So you only have one red tank. And then once you know red tank products, and then you try to figure out other products. So you can write in a different way. Plutonium, the, the chemical simple is, is that. 
therefore you can write in the nuclear light the sample or uh, isotope samples. Uh, so 238 is mass number, so write on the upper corner. And then atomic number, uh, so obviously we don't remember some of those atomic number, you had to use the periodic table for plutonium. So atomic number is 94. So that's only ragtime. And I just say produce. So we will typically say we'll produce only two products. Uh, later on, you will see in some of those uh, nuclear mutants. So we might have uh, more than one product. We might have more than one ragtime. Uh, but uh, for this uh, problem here, if I tell you uh, plutonium uh, alpha emission, that means we have one ragtime, two products. So alpha emission means it emitted one alpha particle. So then one way to, to write alpha particle is the helium nucleus. So therefore, we know one product. Then we see we're adding another product. So, so this is the question. So how do you know what is the other product? Uh, so what do you do? You probably first, uh, you don't know, you leave that uh, empty, you just find out what is the mass number, what is the atomic number, right? So we need to, we need to balance or conserve. Uh, so the mass number and also atomic number. So mass number on the top, uh, we need to balance that. So we start with 238. So that's why equals a uh, four plus something. So let's say the, we call this X, and then we usually say the atomic number is Z. Mass number is A. Okay. So X is I'm, on the... Can you mute everyone? Okay. Okay, uh, so if you have a question, you can click on the participants and click on raise your hand. All right, now, uh, so we're assuming uh, we produce uh, a nuclide, uh, we call that X. Okay, so this, uh, so this X is the unknown nuclide. And then this Z is the unknown atomic number. This A is unknown uh, mass number. Right, so to find out this is three, uh, you just uh, use uh, balance, balancing mass number, atomic number. So 238 equals four plus A. So obviously solving this one, so we solve for A, and we get A equals 234. Uh, so we also need to balance uh, atomic number. Uh, so some, before electron, we cannot call this atomic number because the electron has net, electron has, has a simple like zero, negative one. Uh, so, so that's kind of a negative atomic number for electron. Uh, so we just take that. Okay, so atomic number needs to also be balanced. So we have 94 equals two plus Z. And then we're solving for Z. And then we find Z equals 92. Okay, so now once we know uh, the atomic number, we can use a periodic table to find out what is our element. Okay, so now we, we see this equals 92. So then you go to the periodic table, 
So 92 is the uranium. So the simple is U. Okay, so therefore, so this guy, we figure out this is U, 92 and 234. Yeah, so that's it how to solve a problem like this. So it's kind of, uh, you had to know the, the, our convention. So we assuming there's only one reactant and two products. So therefore you start with one reactant, you start with one reactant, then you have one product, then using these two equations, find the information for the other products. Uh, so then once you know the mass number, atomic number, use the periodic table, if you have 92, you know that will be uranium. All right, um, all right, so this question is very interesting. Uh, so about a radioactive decay of uh, thorium-232 occurs in multiple steps called the radioactive decay chain. Uh, the second product produced in this chain is actinium-228. Which of the following process for leading to this product starting with thorium-232? So to solve this problem, and uh, uh, we can say, uh, uh, so first let's see uh, the mass number change by how much. And we know that a few decay. Uh, so only the alpha, uh, only the alpha decay can change the mass number. Okay, so remember we have alpha decay uh, which is a uh, helium nucleus, so two and four, beta is electron, so electron has negative one and zero mass number. Uh, so then we have gamma, uh, just zero and zero. Uh, then we have a positron, so called the uh, beta plus and then zero. Electron capture is also about the electron. Uh, so in all these five uh, way of uh, emission or decay, the only alpha has the mass number. Okay. Is this a clicker question or not? I, I didn't. Uh, no, uh, this is not. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, we can see in this process, uh, so, we have uh, a starting uh, nuclei and nucleus uh, has mass number 232. So then it changed, the mass number changed from 232 to 228. Uh, so therefore we can see the mass number decreased by four in two steps. Um, so it must involve, uh, therefore this uh, must has one, one, and uh, only one alpha decay. Okay, one alpha decay, you can see this alpha particle will change the mass number by four. And our mass number change in two step four. So therefore, there's only one step has alpha decay. And uh, we can assume maybe the first step has uh, alpha decay or maybe the second step. And, uh, but if you see the choice, so there is no second, uh, uh, or there, yeah, there's a one, one, one choice. So first step is alpha, then the other one is uh, alpha. So therefore we have to find out uh, this alpha decay really happened in step one or in step two. Uh, let's start with, 
let's just assume alpha decays begin in the first reaction or step one. And then we will start with our given nucleus, uh, nucleolide, which is thorium, thorium atomic number 90. So give you 238, which is the last number, so write 230, uh, 232, no, not 238. So we're assuming this is only one reactant, and we say this first step. So first step. I say it, it goes through the alpha decay. So therefore, it produces the helium 2 and 4. And by balance, uh, by the balance uh, atomic number, so therefore, this number will be 88. Why? Because 88 plus two is 90. So that is the balance. And then this uh, mass number will be 228. Uh, same reason. Uh, so 228 plus four is 232. So once you figure out your atomic number is 88, so then you go to the periodic table, so then you say, what is 88? So 88, with the radian R A. Okay. So then, uh, uh, so we know if we have the first step uh, alpha decay, so we produce this radian, and this must be. Okay. Uh, so then, can we use this uh, radian uh, in any this five possible way? To produce our second product or the product in the second step. You can think about what take this by itself, not the helium uh, particle. So, do we have any uh, reasonable way to produce our second product with actinium 228? So, actinium, uh, which is written as AC. So 228 is what we want. And then we'll see if we decide we want to produce this uh, actinium and uh, we use a periodic table, we see this atomic number is 89. So we want this, or we need this. Then can we do that? Can we use this, this known, so this five known decay mode? To produce this one, starting with uh, radium uh, 228. Well, let's see if we have those kind of particles. So, if we want to produce 89 from 88, so therefore this must be a negative one, because negative one and 89 produce 88. Uh, so, negative one is okay because we know electron can have the atomic number of negative one. And then we start with mass number 228. Uh, we have this two, 228 here, so therefore this is zero. Well, this is a, a reasonable particle, which means an electron. So, so therefore, uh, so this uh, first choice, so the choice A, alpha decay followed by the beta emission is plausible. Right, uh, so then do we have any other pos possibility? So the other possibility also have uh, another one also have the alpha decay is a C. So probably, um, so probably uh, we can see it, it will happen in the, in the second step. So the second step, uh, so let's assume in the second step, okay? And uh, uh, so let's go to the next slide. So assume alpha decay in second step. So in we know in second step, we know the products. 
All right. So we don't know what we produce from the first step yet. We'll call this our y. So we say this is unknown product from step one. So when we'll use this unknown product from step one, produce our required uh, product in the, in the second step. Because we are given the information after the second step, you must produce this actinium, which is 89 and 222. So now if you assume in the second step after decay, then you know also this product, so the other product. So then once you know the two products in the second step, and then you add in 89 with two, so this is 91. 228 and a 4 is 232. All right, so then once you know 91, you go to the periodic table. So 91 is called the protectinia. So therefore, this uh, uh, y, this unknown become known. So we know this y is actually equals. Pa. Okay, so this, so Pa is a so called protectinia. Okay, so now we know we, uh, our first step must produce this protectinium 234. So one product of ten one must be this uh, PA ninety one to thirty four. So when we produce that, uh, so now we know in our first step we know what we starting from. All right, so we are given we must start with uh, sodium uh, two thirty two. So sodium is like that. Okay, now what we find out what will be this odd unknown. Okay, Jared, question. So this is the so this A or C that we're doing now. This is the positron emission. Uh, this is the positron emission. Uh. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we we don't know what will be this uh, answer. Uh, so we just uh, analyze the problem. Uh, yeah, Jared, just uh, 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 just a minute. So we're assuming. Um, uh, so okay. if we, yeah, so I'm, if we, that wasn't me that asked the question. That was that was I don't know who that was, but I didn't get to ask my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask. Um, uh, over um, PA, you have 234. Um, I'm just confused. Wouldn't it be, uh, wouldn't it be 232? Because the mass for AC is 228. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that's, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I missed right that. Yeah. Okay, I was okay, just excellent. Sure. excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so therefore this is the same, right? So this will be 232. Okay, uh, yeah. So then the question Norman was asking is, uh, do I try to confirm this is uh, uh, B or C? Um, so I just try to, uh, analyze these two possibilities. Uh, so from the last slide, we know we must have one and only one after decay. So therefore we can, we can start by uh, assuming the alpha decay is the first step. So if in first step, we come up with a conclusion, uh, then the second step 
must be the beta emission. So therefore, so this answer A is okay. But then you see there's one, one more choice. So maybe you have more than one of those are okay. So therefore, once you finish A is okay, but you want to check, uh, is, is it possible if your alpha decay in the second step? Okay. So therefore here I try to assume in, uh, if this alpha decay in the second step, then the first step is what kind of decay? Okay. Um, so I now try to check, uh, yeah, so I now try to check one particular choice here. And uh, that's probably one of the, uh, one of this uh, strategy. If obviously you have multiple choice, you can use elimination, check each uh, one choice, uh, see if that will give you the final product. You can do that. Uh, so uh, what I what I try to do here is just uh, in general I don't want to check any particular choice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so so assuming the alpha decay in the second step, and uh, then we know we will find out. Uh, so the this this unknown product in the first step must be this uh, protegatinium two thirty two. And then, uh, so if we want to produce uh, protein M232 from the first step, uh, we're starting with this reactant, because this reactant is given. Then, now here we want to find out what will be the other uh, product. Uh, the other product is usually a small particle. So that small particle will give us the name, alpha decay, beta decay, particle emission, and so on. All right? Uh, so therefore, we can see, um, uh, so by balance, uh, these uh, equations, we have 90 here, we have 91 here, so this guy must be negative one. Right? Uh, so your mass number already balanced, you start with 232, 232, then this must be zero. All right. So that means the other possibility is the first step is um, beta, and then your second step is uh, alpha. Right? Um, so are, are there any other possibility? Obviously, this is a must be. Can you do an electron capture? Can you put an electron here? If you put an electron here, negative one zero, then that means you cannot produce a net ninety one. Uh, well, can you produce a positron emission? No, if it is a positron, so that's plus one, so plus one, ninety one, ninety two. So therefore, this, if we produce uh, if we if we use alpha decay in the second step, our first step must be beta. So so therefore, uh, let's go back to check. So A is okay, and then so this C second step is okay alpha decay, but the position emission not okay. And uh, you can check in B and D. Uh, they don't have alpha decay because from our analysis, we see the atomic number decreased by four. We must have one step has alpha decay. So this one don't have alpha. This one don't have alpha. This has alpha in the second step, but the positron in the first step, not okay. So therefore, the only choice is A. Okay, so as I said uh, with Zorman, if you really want to, uh, you know, in the in, in the in the test or, or quiz, you can use what I did, or you can just uh, try to use elimination. Uh, just one by one, check one by one, and find out the answer. 
All right. Uh, any questions? All right. Um, so then. I'm sorry. Could okay. you go back to the last slide or two slides ago? I had a question about um, one more slide. Okay. Okay, thank you. The um, the symbol right below um, beta emission uh, uh -huh. and positron emission. Um, mm -hmm. What was is, is that gamma again? I'm sorry. Yeah, this is gamma. Okay, and is that a zero? Is that a six or a zero for the? Uh, zero, the zero, sorry. Yeah. Zero. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. That's all. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also zero. Okay. So this one I try to write. This is the electron capture. Okay, so you can see we, I write it twice of the electron. Uh, so electron can either be emitted or be captured. So this means emit. All right, good. So. You uh, pay attention to, and uh, I know this um, uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, just disturbing most of us uh, use uh, activities. And uh, um, so, so this session we're going to study the nuclear stability. Um, Let's see uh, why some of those uh, nuclear nuclear eye are stable, some others are non-stable. Uh, so those are uh, the topics of uh, high energy physics. Um, we get the con we just started what the uh, what is their conclusions. Uh, so we know any atom with more than one proton, anything but uh, H have uh, repulsions between protons, so between protons in the nucleus. Why? Because proton has a positive charge. So positive and positive are naturally repel. So imagine uh, nucleus has uh, such a small space and when you uh, pack so many protons in such a small space, so the repulsion is really, really high. So what keeps them together, uh, the physicists find out the strong nuclear force keep the nucleus together. So this strong nuclear force uh, only uh, kick in, uh, only become active when the distance between those particles are very, very small. So where the distance between particles are small, but that place is the nucleus or nuclear eye. Uh, so in the nucleus, uh, the neutron, proton, really, really like stuck together very, very close. Um, so that those kind of uh, matter exist in the universe. Um, so I remember in some of those uh, physical science class, they study what is the really final uh, fate of our sun or other stars. So they said, um, you know, the, the sun or star has a lifetime. Uh, so our sun is in the middle age, about uh, 20 billion uh, years. So after another 20 billion years, the sun will die. So, okay, so that means the nuclear reaction will stop, and then every atom in the sun are going to collapse. So what they become? That means the electron will be lost, and the, the electron will clap into the nucleus. So the electron will combine with the proton plus neutrons. So then everything you have left over for the, for, the, for, the, for the star after they die become neutrons. So therefore, they, they finally become a neutron star. And those uh, astronauts, they find out in the universe, 
we do define out some of those uh, objects called the neutron star. So there's nothing else, just, just neutrons. Um, uh, so that's uh, give us uh, some of those idea about, uh, you know, uh, how, 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 how close that will uh, happen. So they estimate, so once the, yeah, I did right. Question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, this doesn't have too much to do with the lecture, but I'm just kind of curious about it. So mm -hmm. maybe I thought you might know a place where I could learn more. Um, like uh -huh. you were talking about stars. Mm -hmm. um, do you know anything about strange matter or like where I could read up on that? That's just always been interesting to me. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, that's, uh, if you want to read, you can either like uh, searching for some of those uh, uh, Website of some of those university physics departments. So what I will do for just uh, Google string matter. Yeah, yeah. They uh, so those kind of theory try to um, explain like the uh, the universe. Uh, so how 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 will be like the universe in, in the future? Like you know the the origin of the universe, then the final destination of the universe. Uh, you know that's. Uh, one theory is like the, the Big Bang, and uh, so explosion, which means uh, so everything right now is still expanding. That's why we have the second law of thermodynamics. The delta S universe uh, a lot than zero, and then to to conserve or to find out those uh, theory to make those theory make uh, make sense, and they have to find out the, the, the mass in the universe. So then the to, to do this, the, um, maybe there's a black hole and maybe those are strange measures. Uh, yeah, uh, I cannot answer that question exactly, Jared. That's fine. Thank you so much. That uh, I'll, I'll start looking. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so neutron we know is neutral, so no, uh, no charge, uh, has a mass. Uh, so therefore, uh, so pretty a very important rule is kind of a glue. Uh, so just uh, keep those uh, a neutron neutron together, then keep the a proton proton together. So therefore, the this kind of uh, experimental result. So the physicists uh, use the experiment and find out this uh, blue dot. Uh, so they plotted the results in this uh, plot, in this graph. Uh, so this is the number of neutron here in this y-axis. So uh, zero charge, mass number one. Then this proton on the x-axis, so the one and one. Uh, so this red line is a one to one ratio between neutron and a proton. Uh, we can see for those uh, smaller nuclear eye, let's say this 20 atomic number or the proton number 20, they pretty much all those are stable. So the blue dot representing the stable nuclear eye. So very close to this one to one ratio red line as the nuclear eye getting larger and larger, the stable nuclear eye uh, deviate from this one-to-one -one ratio. That means they need more neutron than proton to be stable. Okay, so one conclusion by observing this uh, experimental result is for a smaller uh, nuclear eye, let's say it's smaller than what? Uh, atomic number less than 20, and uh, we will have this one-to-one -one ratio. As nuclei getting larger, it takes a larger number of a neutron to stabilize the nucleus. So that you can see from this uh, blue band or the yellow shaded area, uh, deviating away from the red line, the region defined by the dark blue dots in the figure is the so-called belt of stability. Uh, so experimental results show 
so much of a stable, uh, stable nuclei. And obviously, there are some other nuclei or nuclei. Uh, maybe some of those nuclei uh, here, or maybe here. Uh, so either on the top of the stability belt, or belt of the stability, or below. And also, you notice this number here. So this Prismers PI83 is the last point, which means when the uh, time number larger than 83, there are no more stable isotope or nucleus. Okay, so therefore, we find out experimentally only those blue dots, nuclei are stable, and all the other unstable. And uh, then they will decay, and then by uh, compare the number of uh, neutron, number of proton, or get the ratio between number of neutron, number of proton, we can predict what are the decay mode, right? So the first conclusion we find out is nuclei above, when it means on top of the band, okay, so above of the belt of stability, tend to decay by beta emissions. Why beta emission? Or why they, uh, they do that? Uh, so when you have a nuclear eye, so here, so, so here is a one-to-one -one ratio between neutron and a proton. And here, obviously, the ratio, you can see the neutron here, uh, let's say maybe, so here, maybe 65, okay? And here on this line, maybe 40. So obviously, 65 or 40 is larger than one. So, so if you want to make those uh, nucleus become stable, so obviously you want to try to reduce into this region, even though you cannot reduce one to one ratio. So therefore, you want to decrease the number of neutron okay, or increase number of proton. So either way, or maybe both way will happen together. Yeah, so that's good because we know one way, one process, one decay can make the two number change in the same time. That's called the beta emission. So remember the first slide we started today? We say, what is the beta emission? So beta emission, then that means you produce an electron. So you can think about starting with a neutron. So start with a neutron, produce electron. So this is the equation for the, I mean, this kind of net equation, uh, what kind of net equation or the, the source of uh, beta emission. So where the beta electron, where, where the beta particle of the electron come from? In the nucleus, what happened is you convert a neutron into a proton. So therefore, when you when you think about the nuclear eye goes through this process, so they will decrease the number of neutrons because they use neutron produce proton. So therefore, the neutron will decrease, the proton will increase. That will just really decrease the ratio so lower this into the stability region. Okay, now what about if you have some of those other nucleus or nuclei? They are uh, not stable, but they are below. They are below. So below, let's say this number here, uh, or here, uh, and obviously you can see it's still larger than one because you cannot have perfect one, only those uh, smaller than 20, they can have kind of perfect one-to-one -one ratio between neutron and proton. So let's see this number here, this data here. Uh, so there, let's see the 45, and we still have 40. It's still larger than one, but it's below this stable, this stable blue dot. So that means you want to make this red dot become stable, you have to increase this number of neutron, decrease number of proton. So then the, the, the choice is either by positron emission or, of, or electron capture. So we have a two possibilities here. Let's see, what is the positron emission? 
So policy time means you are emitting one of these. You probably want to do the opposite. You will start with a proton. So this is positron. So, so that makes sense because in this process, we use the proton, we produce neutrons, so therefore this number will go up, and this number goes down. So as a result, this ratio will go, will go up. Uh, so the other one is the electron capture. So electron capture, which means you, you think about the electron clapping to the nuclei. So then in the nuclei, the electron cannot exist for too long. So what happens, the electron will combine with the proton, produce neutron. So therefore, that's another way to decrease the number of proton, increase the number of neutron. So both of these electron capture and positron emission can possibly increase our neutron to proton ratio. So in reality, if you have a given nuclei and a nucleus and ask uh, what way you prefer, we don't have really a model or theory to exactly to tell you which way. Uh, you just have to use the experiment to find out which way that a particular nucleus prefer. Maybe use electron capture or maybe use a positron emission. All right. That's okay. so, Dharma? So the equate um, the beta emission equation increases the number of electrons. Oh, the electron really, yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously. So that will increase the number of electron. But usually, those electron will not exist in the atom for long. So they, that's why you call that a beta emission. So in the nucleus, so the neutron uh, change into a proton. So that proton still stay in the nucleus, but the electron produced get ejected. And ejected actually they are uh, well the physicists they started the nucleus. So maybe you have an atom, and even you have an atom, that the electron have so much energy, they probably not will not stay in the electron orbital we started in chapter seven, in chapter one thirteen. So they just get out of the atom. They totally get lost. Okay. Um, so then what is more, more important for us, Roma, is try to pay attention to what happened to the number of neutrons, number of protons. Okay. So, okay, so when you have a beta emission, what it means you will decrease the number of neutrons. Because you use a neutron as a reactant, and you produce a number of protons. And obviously, as you said, you also produce electrons. So electron really doesn't matter to us. You probably worry about if the electron is produced, if it's still in the, in the nucleus, then you will have this process, then everything cancels. Uh, so don't worry about that. So when you produce electrons, so usually this electron has so much energy. So the energy, you know, the energy becomes the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy becomes speed. So therefore this uh, fly out. So when the electron captured, usually the electron captured are those electrons in the electron cloud as we started in chem 113, that are very close to the nucleus. Um, so this one will not be captured, not so likely. Okay. So I said, uh, pay attention to the, what happened to the number of neutrons, number of protons. All right, so then one last point as well that we notice is the uh, nuclear I with larger atomic number, larger equals 84. So the last one is stable is 83. So we not stable. So we don't have any stable nuclear I which has an atomic number more than, uh, more or equal to 84. So they will decay. Then how they decay? So they kind of decay, they prefer by using the alpha emission. So they just chunk off like one slide, uh, one one little bit of the nucleus and become become still become maybe not stable but they will continue to go through the, the decay chain all right so this question is giving you two uh, problems and uh, you want to predicting the decay uh, mode for both of them uh, the first so first question kind of easy uh, you can see the plutonium, so we know plutonium. Uh, what is the atomic number for plutonium? Uh, I think that is 94, right? Uh, so therefore, uh, anything has 
atomic number larger than 83. So they prefer use alpha alpha decay. So we see this uh, plutonium, and then use this name. We find out atomic number is 94. Mass number really doesn't matter to us here uh, for this question. Because as long as you have this atomic number, so we see atomic number larger than 83. So then it prefer it prefer the alpha alpha decay. All right. Uh, so you can also use uh, the the mass number to find out what is neutral number. Then neutral number divided by proton number. See the mass uh, the ratio. Um, we'll do that for the second question. So second question, we have a indium 120 uh, atomic symbol for indium is the I N. So this I or L. So atomic number for I N is 49. The mass number is 120. Uh, so you know you can see the mass number, uh, atomic number is 49. So, the, so obviously this is less than uh, 83. So therefore, to find out the DK mode, you have to use the, the ratio and see those ratio did change, uh, like from one to one stable, then one to one, uh, one point one point four is stable, one point five one point so one point five two is stable. So we can find out the number of uh, neutrons. So that's the symbol for neutrons that will equal 120 minus 49 and give you 71. And then we see the ratio between neutron and just use the symbols and the proton that will equal 71 divided by 49. And that equals uh, what with this number? Uh, 1.45, right? 1.45. Uh, so this is about uh, 49 here. So 49 here, and 1.45. Can see the stable here region 1.4. So if I put uh, 50 here, so I get 1.45 which is larger than this idea ratio 1.40, right? So that means even though we don't have uh, uh, exactly the 1.40, so we have 1.45. So 1.45, this ratio, so this ratio is a uh, uh, bit to bit. So you want, to put, you want to reduce the ratio. What it means, you see, what is the ratio? So this is the ratio. The ratio is, is between neutron and proton. And let's see, where is the neutron, where is the proton? So neutron the top and the proton the bottom. If you want to reduce this uh, ratio, that means you want to reduce the number of uh, neutron or increase the number of proton. So in, in this beta emission process, you know, in the beta emission process, we start with a neutron, so neutron, then we produce a proton, then we produce an electron, so electron get emitted. So in this beta decay, okay, uh, so it do uh, decrease the number of neutrons. Okay, so then increase the number of protons. So therefore we find out for our uh, question question B is going to use the beta decay. All right. Uh, so then the next uh, uh, this slide is about those radioactive decay chain. Uh, some radioactive nuclei cannot be stabilized by undergoing only one nuclear transformation. They undergo a series of uh, decay until they form a stable nucleide, often in the nucleide of lead. Uh, you can see in this uh, uh, diagram or in this graph, 
uh, this is one example. We start with uh, uranium, and alpha decay becomes thorium, then beta decay becomes protagonium, and uranium, thorium, radium, radon, and so on. Um, so experimentally, uh, this is uh, uh, what we find out uh, how many uh, stable isotopes for those common elements. And then we also find out the magic number. Uh, so it's kind of those uh, number we study for the electron, the electron shell, the first shell. Uh, yeah, Shuang? Yeah, yeah, I just had a question on the last example that we did. Okay. Um, so the ratio that we found was 1.45. So if mm -hmm. it was below that 1.40, then would it be the positron emission or the electron capture? Uh, good, good, strong. So what, what do you find out at 1.45? So that's above 1.40. So as you said, it, just in case you find some number at 1.30, and then you will see to use the electron capture or positron emission. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so uh, let's see what we uh, see here on, on this example is uh, we have a so-called some of those uh, stable numbers. So you can see those numbers 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, those number of protons, or 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, for the same number as uh, the proton number of neutrons. So what is common is those numbers are all even numbers, even and even. Uh, all right, so therefore, uh, you will see on uh, this conclusion is nuclear I with an even number of protons and neutrons tend to be stable than those with other numbers. So this is the summary, how many stable Isotope or nuclear I uh, has both proton and neutron even, uh, so we have 157. Uh, what about if one is even, the other one is odd, 53. One odd, the other even, 50. If both are odd, they're not too much stable, so only five of them. So the conclusion is when we need to determine the stability of a nuclei, uh, we will take uh, uh, the following information into consideration. Why the nuclei up to atomic number with approximately equal number of uh, neutron and proton are stable? Uh, secondly, nuclei with even number of proton and or neutron tend to be stable, uh, while nuclei with other number of proton and or neutron tend, tend to be unstable. Uh, then we see. Um, Nuclear I with the atomic number greater than 84 are radioactive. That means they are all unstable or all not, not, not stable if they have atomic number more than 84. Uh, so then I want to start. Sorry. Can you go yeah. back? Sorry. Yeah. How, are, how is 150 safe? How is uh, both protons and neutrons positive uh, and new, even for 157? Uh, this is how much they are stable. So that means, um, so you count here, uh, so one nuclear I even, even stable, then another one stable. So all together we have 157. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, got it. Okay, so in addition to those uh, natural occurring radioactive, uh, you can also induce um, the nuclear reactions uh, so usually you can show those physicists they do by using the particle accelerator. So they can either accelerate uh, alpha particle or some of those smaller nuclei or larger nuclei, then they make them collide, then they will uh, induce the reactions. So we can either use a neutron okay, and or some others uh, smaller, uh, some other particles from body with, uh, uh, or in this, just use neutrons. So the neutron is easier uh, to, uh, to get into the nuclear eye. Uh, or you can just uh, uh, 
made by colliding larger atom with nuclear eye of uh, small atoms. All right, uh, so once those uh, nuclear reaction happens, you can uh, write the equation. So they were like complicated than what we saw before. Usually we see only one reactant, one product. But in this uh, nuclear transmutation, you might have two reactant, two products. Uh, so, so you can write the equation completely as what you said, what you see here. Or you can use the condensed. So this is just one example of condensed. Or the template. So how you write those equation into a condensed kind of a notation? Uh, you just starting with that so called the the ragtime. So this target is the ragtime, okay. and this is the, the product, and this also product, and this also ragtime. Yeah. Um, so you can see this uh, in this example, uh, we matching exactly this equation on the top. So our target is uh, nitrogen, so nitrogen here. And what we use to bombard the alpha particle, so this alpha particle. And uh, then what is ejected, it produces this oxygen 17, oxygen 17, and also produces this one, so this is called the proton. Okay, so I think uh, we will stop here. Uh, so before we go, I will give you this uh, two questions. Okay, so to find this answer for your question, you probably want to start with the mass number change. So how much the mass number change? We start with 232, then ending with 208. So this will be 24. All right, so then you only have two possible decay mode, one is alpha, other one is beta. Alpha has this simple, so helium 24, so that can change the mass number. So every alpha decay will change the mass number by four. Beta, so beta is negative one and zero. So when you have beta decay, you only change atomic number, nothing happened to the mass number. So you want to change all together the mass number by 24. And each time you use alpha decay, you can change four of those mass number. So the question is how much alpha decay uh, happened in this changing process? When you change the mass number by 24, that means how many uh, times of alpha decay? Okay, so you can just uh, text and uh, yeah. Um, so positrons not included for this question? Yeah, positron not included. Uh, so even positron included, you know, positron, so positron will have this beta plus one zero. It does not change mass number. Okay. And uh, you just uh, see how much the best number change in this uh, beginning, in this reactant, in this product. So the reactant has a mass number 232. The product has 208. Uh, yeah, so you subtract and get 24. 
Okay, because I was wondering, because if you were going to get an answer like E, you have to do like 24 divided by 4 and you'd get 6. But the problem with that is like the mm -hmm. atomic number would be dropped. So I was wondering if I did. Oh, if I, did, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. One. yeah. So there's, yeah, there's you know, not a um, weak concern here. I think that's, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, yeah, you can probably in reality, there, this assumption, so only alpha decay and beta decay, that's a good assumption. Um, but I think that's really not representing the true reality. Maybe in reality, there's some positive emission. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Wang. Mm -hmm. I'm also really confused because you said that the only thing that uh, could change the atomic mass would be an alpha decay, right? Uh, it's called the uh, mass number, right? Yeah, so this this number, like this, uh, so this 24 number. Yeah, that, yeah, you're right, the, the mass number, like the, the top number, right, right, excuse me. Right, right. right. Um, so, you, so it would have to be, hmm. Yeah, so every alpha uh, decay change uh, the mass number or decrease the mass number by four, right? So for this question, you, you want to decrease, let's say you start with 232 and you want to get 208. So therefore you, we want to, we want uh, the mass number decrease by 24. And obviously, okay. yeah, so use one alpha decay, not enough. So you have to use one alpha decay decrease by four, another alpha decay decreased by eight, another decrease, another alpha decay decreased by 12, right? Got it. Yeah. And now, yeah, no. I was lost, I thought it was only gonna be, no, okay, I got it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Wang, so is it C or E? Why? Well, you, if a C is C, that means have four times. So four times the four is the 16. Right? Oh, 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 this is four. This is four. No, this is four. So you, you, you want to hold this, this answer is how many alpha decay. So if you only have a two alpha decay, you change the mass number eight. If you have a three alpha decay, you change the mass number 12. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the class. Oh, you're welcome, Zorma. Can you go back one slide, please? Okay. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Look yeah. at it. Thank you. Yeah, we, we did not finish this question. Uh, so this is really the template. Uh, so this is not the answer. Okay. Yeah, so this is not the answer. You try to use this template. So in this question, your, your, so this target, so this part here is a ragtime. Okay. So you, you see you, our ragtime in this example is the oxygen 16. So therefore you have to change this into oxygen 16. Okay. And then you see what we use so called the uh, bomb body. So that's the small particle here. And then this is the, uh, that's a proton. So you can write a proton. Then, uh, Inside this uh, parenthesis, you will use the ejected uh, particles. So this alpha, therefore you write alpha, and then this produced product, that's the uh, product, product, then seven and 13. Yeah, so that's, uh, just memorize the template, and then substitute, 
those ragtime product, you might switch the order, like you see here, this alpha. So the, the way they write this product first, then this alpha second. But in this here, you can see they uh, change their positions. So we write the alpha before uh, this N, and then here you write the alpha after N, after the product. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so if you have a question, you can come back to the office hour. I probably will wait a few minutes in the office hour because I, I will take some time to convert this recorded lecture. I usually don't want to start another Zoom meeting. So I worry about I might lose the conversion to lose the recorded lecture. Okay, so. Uh, I will see you probably a little bit in the office hour. Uh, you can email me and uh, to schedule some other time. All right. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Um, I'll probably be emailing you. Okay. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, Dr. Wang. Have a good okay, day. Okay, bye. Thank you. You have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye, Dr. Wang. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye-bye. Goodbye.